guys, welcome back. Jeff off the Red Iron Well. Today I've uh, come to you with a, a little bit of a show and tell. Uh, over the last year, I've been working on my YouTube channel, and uh, as such, I've had lots of opportunity to make some DIY projects, uh, specifically twig stoves, and they've definitely evolved, and each of them is unique and different, and that's the episode, uh, that's the theme of the episode I want to share with you today. It's all about DIY twig stoves. Check it out. Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. As I was saying, for the last, well, at least a year or so, I have uh, been making different twig stones and uh, just want to take you through some of the ones I've made over the years. This was my first model and it's made from conduit boxes, electrical conduit boxes. And originally it was just the one, one level, one piece. This is uh, uh, extension flange. I have put a hinge on the back and put a little magnet there so it stays open. But then this is the extension box and you can see all the different electrical ports that I've punched out. Left the screws in the top and if I want that extra height, those two slide together like so. The twigs can be fed from the bottom. into the bottle, okay? Or you can use some sort of uh, uh, fuel canister as well. And then from there your pod goes on top. This was a little ash pan that slid in the bottom just to provide some extra insulation and uh, protection from the ground. So that was, uh, that was my first model. That was the uh, First DIY, DIY twig stove <laughs> that I made. It, it is quite heavy, but uh, quite robust. My second one uh, is, uh, ironically, I made a bag for it too. This one was called the, the, the trig stove. Trig, making a math reference to a triangle. But it all comes packaged together like this. And quite a bit, quite a bit lighter. This is uh, originally, I'll provide a link to all these up on, uh, up top. This was originally a triangular shaped deep fryer basket. And I've got all the different pieces here. It has one piece and it folds together on the back. Like so. And this is a little support. Attaches in there. Grill rotates down on top of it. And there's the door. And from the front, this is where you, you start your fryer. Inside, you can uh, brace that up if you like to create a ramp. And that's, uh, that, that's worked well. It's nice and flat, collapses down to uh, virtually nothing. Lots of airflow and nice flat top for any uh, any cups or uh, frying pans. And take down is simply pull a pin, pull that pin out, and push the bottom in. And I always put the pin back inside here. The door shuts. This collapses down. Sides go around. And this pin drops through that lid and holds it all together. That's, that's the, the trig stove. What I wanted to do was reduce the, they call it the, the fiddle factor, how much fiddling you have to do to get the stove up and operational. 
in there like so. Now this piece I didn't show you, this piece goes through the sides. And it really locks everything together. There we go. I haven't used this one for a day or two. Forget how it goes together. So just like that. That's called the, the trig stove. That was my second build <clears throat> and my last one just last night and we're gonna fire it up today is this one and uh, what I really like about this one is it's the, the lightest of the three it's all one piece and there's no assembly required um, you start your fire in here where you can access it quite easily and once it's going drop the uh, the chute or the hopper you can see down inside there is a bit of a ramp. The twigs follow down right into your your lower your lower chamber. It has holes around the outside for ventilation, and it's my hope that uh, it uh, it works as planned. And that is uh, we're going to have uh, have a go at this and light it up here shortly and do the initial burn to get some of this galvanized. Uh, finish off the side so we can we can paint it with a heat, uh, heat high heat paint one of the things I showcased in a prior video was the making of these little homemade fire starters full of pencil shavings and an old old candle uh, this is poured into a, an egg carton But what you can do is take one of these and quite easily throw that in uh, in a pack or some kind of a fire fire starter kit and have that on hand for uh, for an emergency fire starter when you're in a pinch. <clears throat> How something like this works is you take the Take the wax and the the mixture. And the pencil shavings, that works really well. And just kind of loosen up the top like that. So with your tinder packet, if you uh, just had a fire steel, sometimes it's rather hard to get it going. So sometimes you might have to take some other little uh, little tinder on there just to some light material there you go so with a quick strike of your fire steel into that material, I did add a little bit of uh, kind of dried grass, and this is uh, some Phragmites. It lights up, and that's uh, going to be the heart of your fire until you uh, get it going. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to carefully transfer that into our... You can see that burning inside the stove. And we can add, keep adding twigs on top of that. <clears throat> or we can just drop the hopper. And put the sticks down the chute.
Okay, and then with the twigs down the hopper, you can see them sliding right in the bottom. And just a gravity fed. We've got quite the quite the burn happening right now. That's great. As the sticks burn down, they just slide completely on their own right down into the fire. There's quite a bit of a rocket effect happening there. There's a lot of heat coming vertical right at that central spot there. It's working well. Everything's off the ramp. It's sliding right down the ramp, right in where it should be. Excellent. I don't know if you can see it on the, uh, the camera, but it's just billowing right at the top. Super hot. The ramp is just working perfect. Everything's sliding right down the ramp, right into the burn chamber inside. You can see it's, the, I just have the right amount of draft happening up through the holes, and there's just a real kind of cone of uh, flame and heat coming out through the top. I do see it's starting to catch my log on fire, so we're going to try to lift it up. There we go. So what I'm going to do now that the hopper is basically empty, I'm going to close up the sides and um, just drop through from the top see if I can get, get the, uh, the sides burned off. And you can see that open port from the bottom, super hot. Just come right at the top. I see the rocket effect working. I want all that to burn off, so I'm going to really stoke it and get it get it rolling.
and this is great. The opening at the back, the uh, the feeder on the, uh, on, the, on the I guess the front side, is uh, is perfect because this really creates a really wind wind barricade that uh, that really confines the heat and flames right up to the bottom of your cup. I'm sure that would boil water in no time. So we saw, we saw the front, look at the back. With that hopper flange on the, on the back there, everything is just pushing itself through. And all the ashes, uh, just white hot in there, are falling inside and not falling back into the front or sides of the hopper or uh, sides of the uh, cooking stove. I do notice that one of my, one of my aluminum rivets I think that melted, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. I think some of these rivets might have to be replaced with stainless ones, which I knew that going ahead uh, when I started this project. I just dropped the hopper open, and uh, look at that flame. Just right where you want it to be. So much draft, and it's just eating every stick that I put in there. I'm telling you, what a great design. I, <laughs> I'm so stoked that I, I came up with this one. But uh, burn's almost done. Didn't get all of it, but uh, that's all right. We'll give it a, a spray of some, I don't know, some high temperature black paint, primer and paint, and should be good to go. Just as I'm waiting for the firebox to cool down, <clears throat> I. Uh, Got a package in the mail. This is uh, this some time coming. This is from a good good friend of mine, and I call it fan mail, but it's not. Uh... And what it is, super excited. Whoa, not gonna lose that in the dark. This is from my friend Connie, Keith, and Josh, and what it is is on their 3D uh, printer. They engraved me um, a glow-in-the-dark whistle with my name on it. That is so cool. Oh, super loud. <laughs> Geese are going to fly over. But, uh, wow, what a great, great piece for my kit. I'm going to put that on the, uh, uh, maybe uh, on the end of my, my knife sheath and have it with me. Uh, the glow-in-the-dark function, uh, my next overnight, I'll definitely be, be showcasing that. But what a great piece of uh, engineering to do that, all with the 3D printer. And it's got a lanyard hole on there, obviously my, my last name. And the design of the inside, it's super loud. This may, uh, I might have to take this to school, I'm not sure. I'd probably get more use out of it there than any of my overnights. But uh, thank you so much, guys. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, cherish it and uh, certainly get lots of use out of it uh, hopefully this fall if we're back on the football field uh, with uh, the uh, epidemic over but uh, we'll see what September brings so thanks so much uh, Connie, Keith and Josh hope you're doing well anyways on that note that's about end, uh, end of today's video thanks for joining me uh, we had a look at uh, three of my stoves my uh, uh, DIY uh, twig stoves. Uh, I want you to encourage you to get in your shop, get in your garage, and try your hand at uh, making something. Uh, there's been a number of times, a number of my DIY links. I just throw the camera on and see see what comes up. And this uh, this last stove has certainly been a win. Um, I'm super excited to get uh, a coat of uh, coat of black paint on it, and uh, maybe make a little special box or special case to uh, bring it along or carry it along. So until next time, Jeff Allen off the Great Iron. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Click the link down below. Please check out the, uh, the videos up above and see what else uh, I can offer you in terms of uh, new skills, new ideas, and uh, certainly new adventures. Until next time, take care. Enjoy your outdoors.